everyone. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to solve the encryption problem on HackerRank. And this is rated as an easy problem, although I think it should be a medium problem, especially since the instructions are pretty difficult to follow. And as you're going to see in a minute, I'm going to be solving this in JavaScript. So instead of going through the instructions here line by line, I think it's better for me to just kind of say them in my own words and break them down into some simple steps for you guys. So we're given a string and ultimately the goal is to convert it into a grid. And the first thing that we are explicitly asked to do is to remove all the white space from the string right up here. And then the next thing that we have to do is determine the number of rows and columns of the grid. And lastly, we have to fit our original string into the grid row by row and then generate a new string that groups characters column by column with a space in between each group. So really the three steps are white space, count the rows and columns, and then uh, determine the output string based on our grid pattern. So let's start with uh, the white space removal part because it's kind of isolated and pretty straightforward. So the easiest way to do this is to use a regular expression and we can go to the documentation here. And if you look here, that's the pattern for a regular expression in JavaScript. First you have a forward slash followed by the pattern that you want to locate, followed by another forward slash, and then followed by any modifiers. So the pattern that we want to locate here is whitespace, and that's represented by a backslash lowercase s right here. And then the modifier that we want is g for global, because that'll make sure that we find all instances of our pattern, not just the first one, right? Because we want to remove all white space. So uh, we also want to combine this regular expression with the string replace function, so that basically we locate the white space and then we remove it. So we can create a uh, new string variable and basically take our old string, use the replace function. Our first value for this function can be the expression. So it's going to be forward slash backslash s forward slash g. And you don't need any quotes around that. And then the next thing is just going to be what we want to replace it with. And because we want to remove it, we just do some close quotes like that. So now the next thing um, is to determine the number of rows and columns in our grid. And to do that, they actually give us a formula right up here. And it's kind of difficult to follow, but essentially it's at saying that the number of rows equals the floor of the square root of the string length, and the number of columns equals the ceiling of the square root of the string length. And using uh, built-in math functions, we can easily calculate these two values. So let's do that here. We can start off with the rows, and essentially it's going to be math.floor of math.square root of the uh, string that has no white space, right? That's what we want to use now, and the length of that. And now our number of columns is going to be um, basically the exact same thing, except now we're using the ceiling. So we can just change that to columns and change this to ceiling. So now a problem you might notice is that we actually have to fit all of the string into our grid. And it might turn out that the formula we just used doesn't actually give us enough rows or columns to do that successfully. So if that's the case, we can just increase the number of rows by one. So we can just check that using an if statement here that says if the number of rows times the number of columns is less than uh, the length of our array, or, I mean of our string, then uh, in that case, we can just increment the rows by one. And that'll take care of that problem. So now that we know the dimensions of our grid, we can generate the output string. And we don't actually have to fill a grid here using a 2D array or something like that. We can just kind of imagine where the characters would go in a grid. And as I mentioned earlier, what they want for the output is to be the characters of each column grouped up and separated by a space. So the algorithm for this is kind of complicated, so I'm going to do my best to explain it. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is just to create an uh, empty string for our output. And then the next thing to kick this off is to create a for loop 
and we want it to run through our string for the number of columns because that's how many column groups that we want for the output. So basically every time this for loop iterates, we're generating a new group of characters for the output. So if we write that out, it's going to look like this. Within this for loop, we want to first have a jump value that starts off as 0. And then also a while loop that runs as long as we have characters left to grab. So we're going to use our index i as sort of a target from which to jump from. And as we pick characters off of our string, we can add them to our output string one by one. And then we also want to increase the jump, but let's type this out first. So we want to go for as long as i, our target, plus the jump is less than the uh, string length. Right, we don't want to fall off the string. As soon as we hit that max, we can stop the while loop. Now within this, we want to set our new string to uh, the value, the character that we're at. So we can say uh, the value at index i plus jump. And this next part's really important, and that is to increment the jump value. And we're going to increment it by the number of columns. Now there's not really a magic way just to know that you want to increment it by the number of columns. The way I figured this out was just by using paper and pencil and drawing out the grid, drawing out each index for every character, looking at the output and seeing that, hey, we want to increase the jump by the number of columns. So for example, say we have four columns. We want to first start off with our target at index zero. Then we want to look at index four. Then we want to go to eight. So it kind of just works out if you guys want to uh, draw it out yourself. I highly recommend that because it makes it a lot easier to understand. Um, and then the last thing right here, like they said in the spec, is to have a space after every group for each column. And then lastly, all you got to do is return the string. So now we can just copy over the code to confirm that it passes all of the tests. And it looks good. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments, and I'm going to do my best to answer every one of those. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope I could help you guys out.